hi. Um, I really don't like sharing my screen at the start, but it's really good to be here at the virtual green Christmas market. Uh, thank you to the delegate team for thinking of me and inviting me. And a uh, very, very nice Sunday to all of you who are here, um, listening to all the businesses that are working towards a more sustainable future and potentially a more, um, you know, just, just a better way to, to exist um, in our society today. So my name is Jolene. Um, I founded and I run Urban Tiller Singapore. And Urban Tiller Singapore works on a very simple premise. Um, and in the next 30 minutes, what I'm going to do is actually just to share with you what we do and why we do it, how we do it, and of course, how um, that also plays into a part of you guys being able to buy more sustainably and eating more fresh. So let me just rewind and go back to sort of, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a while, but I'm just going to go back to sharing about the title of this uh, talk, right? Um, which is what I told Delegate and Team, reimagining re sort of urban farming and local produce using the idea of freshness, right? And to me, I think there's a lot going on in the scene of urban farming right now. Everyone's telling us to eat local. After COVID, during Circuit Breaker, we saw, you know, panic buying. We saw a huge sort of just discussion and conversation being started around food, where our food comes from, are we food secure? Um, and I think these are questions that I wanted to really kick off as we have more news coming up. You know, Channel News Asia would always be talking about where our food comes from. Um, we'll be thinking about who our farmers are. Is it sustainable to eat local? What does it mean to eat local? And I think here, what I wanted to open up was also a very interactive session. So in the next 30 minutes, please, um, you know, send the questions in through the Q&A in the chat. Don't be worried about waiting till the end. Uh, please just send questions through any time that you feel like. And this is definitely something that I would love to just interact in and explore. So I'll just going back to my screen. And so this, there's a huge discussion around what urban food looks like. And Urban Tiller thinks of it as, you know, sustainable, fresh, and safe, right? And, and around these three words, each of them have a lot to do with how we run our business and the core principles that, you know, underlie what started our business as well. So the premise of Urban Tiller is that I will produce, I will deliver fresh produce within eight hours of harvest to your doorstep. And because I deliver within eight hours of harvest, I necessarily procure all my fresh harvest from local farms. So Urban Tiller is quite new. We've only been around for about two and a half months. Um, and this really, really was in response to thinking about all the local food and local farmers who are working in Singapore. But there was a fundamental problem. So there's a fundamental problem for both the farmers as well as the consumers. So when was the last time, for example, you went to the supermarket and, and you know, had an idea of how fresh that produce was, right? Um, is it something that came in from China? Is it something that came in from Thailand or Malaysia? And if we think about the supply chains, how long did that vegetable take to get to you, right? And on top of that, you're thinking about all the carbon emissions, you're thinking about all the wastage that happens along the food supply chain. And I think Urban Tiller really takes those problems into consideration. So statistically speaking, about 50 to 70% of our food damages or rots or is gone to waste um, along our supply chain, especially if they're international. So a big part of eating local and eating sustainably and being green also comes down to shortening international supply chains and eating very, very much local, right? So that's one of the things that Urban Tiller already knows that we have to do. Um, so that's what we do. Our promise is that we have removed all middlemen. Um, we manage sort of picking up the produce from the farms, packing it and immediately sending it to homes. And that really reduces so much of what happens to vegetables as they are handed from one middleman to another. Um, and in that spirit, we hope to keep things as sustainable as possible. So the other thing about this is that how do we make sure that things are sustainably farmed, right? being sort of in the agricultural business and being somewhat of an aggregator at this point, Urban Tiller in Singapore focuses very much on urban farming and sustainable farming practices. One of the reasons that we've been thinking a lot about urban farming is not just the space constraints in Singapore, it's not just high-tech farming, but also that conventional farming that happens on soil is a great thing. But one thing that we need to realize in urban settings is that being able to farm for a large number of people and being able to produce food and achieve food security, right? 
requires more innovative thinking, more sustainable farming methods. And that's just something that requires a lot more people to think about, okay, um, how do we measure that sustainability? Is it that our farmers are growing things that uh, you know, don't use as many resources? Have we come up with innovations that will make sure that we use less water, less electricity, um, while ensuring the quality of the produce? All right, so I'm just going to move on to the next slide now that we understand sort of the premise uh, very, very quickly. Um, this little graphic really just shows how we move the produce in a very, very short supply chain. And within eight hours of harvest, that's the other thing, right? Um, leafy greens and general vegetables, they begin losing their nutrient content vastly as um, they sort of get processed after harvest. So in fact, Research has shown that some spinach and other green vegetables actually lose up to 90% of their nutrient value within 24 hours of harvest. And within 24 hours of harvest, that's really, really little time compared to what you might imagine a national supply chain to look like. So what we do is within eight hours of harvest, our farmers are basically harvesting in that morning. We process and we deliver between 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. so that we get vegetables within eight hours of harvest to you. Okay, I'm just going to move on. So in Urban Tiller, we focus on three things, right? Growing, moving, and delighting you with freshness. So with growing, let's just begin there for a little while. Um, with growing, there's a lot when it comes to urban farming. And feel free to shoot me some questions in the chat as well. I would love to answer some questions if you have. Um, but at Urban Tiller, we focus on growing sustainably. So supporting local farmers is a huge conversation to have. So right now in supermarkets, we have sort of um, racks and areas that are delegated for urban produce and, and sort of local produce. Uh, there's uh, Singapore Food Agency's efforts on having a Singapore grown label, a uh, local produce label. And that's fantastic, right? It's just that I also wanted to ask myself the question as I was starting this business, what it means to help farmers become secure. Right. So in the supermarket, we would be walking down the aisle. We see things that are from Singapore, that are from Malaysia, from China, from Thailand. And you look at price, right? That's the first thing we look at as consumers. In fact, most consumers would do that. So a huge question for me was, hey, Singapore is probably one of the most expensive places to farm in Singapore. Uh, I mean, in the world, right? So not only is space expensive, electricity is expensive, water is expensive. And we often associate farming as something that people used to do very fundamentally um, to you know, live off the land and to be able to process all this food for themselves. In Singapore, we know that that's not quite possible. Although I really, really look forward to people also farming at home, producing our own food. That's, a, that's an amazing step forward. And for me, it boiled down to how are our local farmers competing? Right? Are they even making enough money to stay alive? Because if we don't realize that sort of with the changing climate, with um, rising cost of living and, you know, a less amenable environment for growing food, food's going to get more expensive, right? Food's going to get expensive anyway. And in Singapore, we ex import more than 90% of our food right now. If we only grow about 10 or less than 10% of our food, that's worrying because who are these farmers, right? How are they growing for us? Are they receiving subsidies from the government? Who are they selling to? How are they making their business viable, right? And that was a huge question that I had. A lot of the thinking behind our began with, while also delighting the customers with extreme freshness. Right. In an urban city, you should be eating fresh because you have urban farms who are literally 30 minutes away from you. Um, but we realized that there was no one doing that. There was no one allowing urban produce their space. Um, and there was no one who was focusing solely on what could be ultra fresh, ultra value added, um, and very, very good for you in that sense because it really um, is nutritious. And a lot of our farmers in the city focus a lot on nutrition, quality, and freshness as well. So thinking about uh, moving smartly, right, we also think about how do we reduce food miles and food waste by reducing our reliance on food imports. So to begin with, if you eat local, you're reducing a huge part of your reliance on food imports. And I know that in Singapore, that's a difficult challenge, right? Um, in Singapore, most of our farmers are growing leafy greens, uh, vegetables, and some we have a lot of egg farms, uh, and we also have fish. 
So that's what Singapore Food Agency would consider our three food baskets of food security. Uh, vegetables, leafy greens, eggs, and fish. So these are a small part of our diet, right? No matter what we are culturally, I think there's always a yearning to, okay, so what about rice? What about carbohydrates? What about um, potatoes, tubers, nuts, fruits, and all of these things? So it's really, really difficult to have that conversation because you go like, hey, there is limited space. We can't farm um, like the way people in larger countries do. We don't have space for fruit orchards. We don't have space for growing tuberous you know, vegetables. And how do we deal with that, right? And I think at the root of the problem is also me realizing on my journey that a lot of farmers are working on razor thin margins, right? If after you sort of think about setting up a farm in Singapore, putting in the operational cost of growing food, and selling your vegetables at $192 at the market, at the supermarket, that's a huge challenge, right? It's operationally intensive. You need to pay for manpower. You need to ensure the quality of your produce. And there's no way for you to sort of command a higher price point because if people are competing with you from with Malaysian prices, Chinese prices, Thai like prices, um, consumers will not choose you unless there is a value add. So the really the, the value add of the business with Urban Tiller really is freshness. Um, and you taste the difference, right? You taste the difference when something's freshly harvested, and that really preserves the quality. Um, and gives our local farmers a competitive edge over what you see in the supermarket. And that's why for us, it's so important to move it to you within eight, six to eight hours of harvest, such that you're actually getting a meal and vegetables with full value, right? So, I mean, what my business partner and I like to think about is, hey, like supermarket, we're paying for something that looks like vegetables, that tastes like vegetables, but the nutrient value has drastically reduced precisely because of the amount of time that it's been sitting outside. Right. Um, another thing about us is that sustainable farming uh, techniques also mean that our farmers do not use any um, chemical pesticides. And we're very, very much focused on uh, organic farming methods, even though most of the farmers are not organic certified. So we've been running for about two and a half months um, and the feedback has been really, really good. So even though it's only been two months, uh, we have active users on our app. And we have customers who come back to us saying that, hey, you know, I'm really grateful for the freshness because there's nothing else that gives me such guaranteed quality and freshness. Um, and I feel connected to the farmers again, right? And that's a huge part. I think there's a huge movement towards food production, understanding local produce and supporting the agricultural scene here. But I also wonder, when was the last time you felt connected to a farmer who was actually growing your food? When you were connected to images of that farm, when you were able to visit that farm as well. So for us right now, we work to about, with about four to, four, four to five farms in Singapore. They're a mix of outdoor and indoor farms. We use soil and hydroponic methods. Um, and the produce is something that has really made me very happy as well um, after I sort of started doing work in this space. Um, I'm just going to show you guys some pictures. So of course, like any new age business, you can find us on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, and a lot of people have told us that, hey, like freshness makes up for that, right? It really tastes a lot better. Um, and we have a good selection of different greens, microgreens, herbs, cherry tomatoes, white bitter gourd, um, and all of these items. So at this point, I just also wanted to throw in some personal stories, right? Like, I think what makes Urban Pillar so special is that we're able to provide farmers with a peace of mind. So there's one of the farmers that I work with, they use the supply to a supermarket, and you can imagine an entire farm growing for a supermarket. However, um, you know, the supermarket called and said, hey, you know, we might have found a Malaysian supplier and I don't need your stuff anymore. Um, and of course, the farmers were left slightly, you know, uh, at a loss. And I think that was the point where I stepped in and said, hey, you know, don't worry, you can sell it to me um, and I'll sell it to consumers for you. And I'll, in fact, deliver it within eight hours of harvest. Um, and you know what? Uh, the way I work with farmers is that I provide a buyback guarantee. So if you know any farmer who is trying to sell off their produce and would like an access to an audience, um, <clears throat> Urban Teller is very, very open to work with different kinds of farmers. And I would provide a buyback guarantee so that every day I pick up the same amount of produce. So you might also wonder, so then what happens if you were not able to sell that produce that day? So for us, we are very much a circular business. We don't only want to reduce waste and reduce carbon and pollution. We also want to be fully um, circular. 
So the way we do that with vegetables is that we're also building a sister company uh, that focuses on fermentation. So how do we turn local produce or unsold local produce, which is still good for that day, into things like kimchi or pickles or fermented products that can also be sold on Urban Pillar. So there's absolutely no waste that goes into our process and we try very, very hard to actually reduce um, the amount of time we spend on the road as well, uh, which is why we're building the technology that gives us uh, more efficient routing technology and we also are building a full traceability platform. And a full traceability platform would then give consumers access to a full certificate of where your produce has come from, where it's changed hands, uh, when it was planted, when it was harvested as well. And that to us is the standard of quality and safety that we want to produce, uh, provide our consumers with, right? Increasingly, your food comes from all over the place. Um, and we would really like for people to have that sense of security and access to information. Um, so do try it out. I'll just give you guys a sense of what we have on our platform. And just give me a moment to check if any questions have come in. No, no questions so far. So right now we have been working with um, salad greens, Asian greens, cherry tomatoes, microgreens. Uh, we have salad boxes. We have white bitter gourds and edition, uh, limited edition heirloom specialty crops as well. And this is really something that we look forward to because a lot of people have told us, hey, you know, we love the produce. It's super fresh. It's super good. You have more, right? And that's uh, something we're constantly working with and working on. Uh, we're trying to reach out to as many farms as possible and um, also innovate on the ways that we do delivery. So, um, you know, this is the green Christmas market. And I'm glad to say that we have always pr provided a zero plastic option. So instead of zero, pla uh, instead of plastic packaging that you see in this picture, we actually bring it to you in a box and you're able to retrieve those vegetables um, with your own containers and it makes it a zero plastic process as well. So it's a huge, huge thing that, that for us, we've, you know, met really, really encouraging customers who have returned to us week on week. Um, microgreens going into salads. We also have a blog that gives you recipes and use cases for the vegetables that you can get from us. Um, and we're really excited for anyone to try. So for anyone who's listening here as well, I would love to guarantee a 30% off your first purchase on our app, um, which you can download from the Google Play Store or the App Store. And we're also always looking for feedback on how we're doing, um, on our produce, on the service, on our delivery process as well. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Urban Tiller SG. Um, and of course, the order options, right? So we deliver from Mondays to Saturdays, and you can receive next day delivery if you order before 8 p.m. today. Um, so, you know, on Sundays you don't really get produce, but um, go ahead and order for the next week. Um, we really, really would like to hear your feedback on this. Uh, the prices are relatively competitive with supermarket prices. And the way we do that is that, look, you pay a little bit of a premium um, to us for that freshness, but we're also removing all the middlemen um, who actually might be along the supply chain if you're buying from a supermarket. So I'm just going to give some time for questions and discussions. So an attendee has asked whether there's a minimum order or delivery fee. There's actually no minimum order. So you could order however much you like. Uh, and it's free delivery above $15. So if you don't hit $15, the delivery fee is a flat $2. This is an introductory pricing. We would love to get feedback from you and for you to try the produce we want to minim sort of like minimally lower the the barrier to entry so that people can actually try it out as well um so from mondays to saturdays you will actually receive a uh, sort of a notification when your order is confirmed and you can basically you can basically reply to that uh, based on your delivery time yep just in time so another question came in what time do you deliver every day is there a time we can indicate Yes, so we have two delivery slots from Mondays to Saturdays from 12 to 3 p.m. and from 3 uh, to 6 p.m. So usually you would, be able to, you would be able to indicate that in your delivery slot in the app and you will, yes, the advice is to put the vegetables in the fridge um, and we'll also send along some care tips for your microgreens. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Um, you don't need to key in a promo code. It's not a $30 discount. It's a 30% discount of your entire bill. Um, I've, I've seen people ordering nearly $100 worth of vegetables to get $30 off or $35 off because that's 30%. Um, the first purchase, 30% is automatic. So you just need to check out and that 30% uh, discount code will apply. 
Um, and just like the first days of Uber, you have a referral code. Everyone in your family can download the app and use it the first time and get 30% off. Uh, you can refer your friends. Yeah, both of you will get 20% off after your first one. And we hope that, you know, uh, we let as many people try as possible. So do I have a subscription plan? Right now, I do not. I am working on it. Um, I am really, really excited about a subscription plan also with food products. But right now, a subscription plan is difficult because I'm still trying to understand what people like, what people don't like. Um, but, you know, right now, that ties in with the most popular greens. Aside from a subscription plan, I have a signature salad bag. So you can basically order our signature salad greens bag for $35 and that contains everything you need to make a wonderful salad dinner for about three to four people in your family or friends. Um, I also have a greens bag so you get to try everything from our Asian green selection, everything from our salad green selection. Uh, what are our most popular greens? That's a great question. I would say that our most popular greens would be the kale, the baby spinach, um, and the cherry tomatoes. So the kale has been told to, to have a very seaweedy flavor. So instead of your kale being bitter, a kale is quite sweet. Uh, if you make kale chips with them, they turn out to be like seaweed chips. It's really, really good. I do them a lot. Baby spinach, uh, so many of our customers have told us that they eat our baby spinach fresh out of the bag, like potato chips, uh, because they've not found baby spinach in Singapore that's so fresh. Most of the time in supermarkets, you find it frozen. Uh, for us, it's extra fresh, right? Cherry tomatoes are amazing uh, from Pacific Agro Farm. I love their cherry tomatoes. The red grape tomatoes are like, extremely sweet. Um, you can also order the salad boxes. That's been a good selling point because you get to try everything. You get to try the lettuce, the kale, the baby spinach, microgreens, and tomatoes, and some edible flowers as well. We have a signature flower salad box, which you can see here. Um, so there are some edible flowers that you can be surprised by as well. Um, lots of flowers are actually edible and provide a lovely flavor and I really hope that that becomes one of the ways that more people start appreciating salad and eating greens. Um, I would also say the, which one was that? Yeah, so the kale, the baby spinach, the lettuce, um, the lettuce is really good as a Japanese frisé lettuce, there's a crystal green lettuce. Um, and then the white bitter gourd, surprisingly, is very, very good. The naifa is also very good. Uh, so our bok choy and naifa, I would also recommend. Um, yeah, what is the cutoff for next day delivery? The cutoff is 8 p.m. So if I wanted a delivery tomorrow for Monday, I have until Sunday 8 p.m. So it's always 8 p.m. the day before for delivery the next day. Right. How long do the veggies typically last after we receive them? This is a great question. So we always recommend that you buy fresh and eat fresh. Um, but because our vegetables are so fresh, if you actually store them in your fridge, just put a paper towel around them. I've had people who told me that they can last up to four to five days um, because you've already buffered for freshness. You know, if you go to a supermarket, statistically, the vegetables have been there for about three to ten days since harvest. And which is why sometimes you can't keep them for more than two or three days. For us, people do tell us they keep it for up to four to five. I always recommend eating it fresh because it's, it's available every day, right? So if you need it tomorrow, order a smaller quantity and we'll, um, we really adjust it for that to make it as cheap as possible. And also the quantities can feed you for a day or two and you can order again. Um, that allows us to also feed back to the farmers and we, we you know, really focus on keeping our products consistent. Do I provide preparation, cooking, and for unknown veggies? Absolutely. So I will also provide you with a PDF of recipes that we have. You can also go to our blog at Urban Tiller SG. Let me just bring you over there right now. So um, on our website, although you can't make an order, Urban Tiller SG gives you our full selection of vegetables. Um, so really, really, I think the naipa is one of the most tasty vegetables I've tasted along um, from with our white Asian spinach. Everything is below three dollars um, for a hundred gram quantity because we do want you to try and want you to taste them. And then our kale, baby spinach, cherry tomatoes, we're slowly increasing our assortment and I really really recommend the microgreens, our flavor bombs, right? Uh, microgreens are extremely nutritious because of you know they're just growing up from the seeds, uh, extremely fresh, you can harvest them yourself since you're about to eat them or if you have green fingers and are so inclined, can continue to grow them. So a lot of our customers have told us that they're buying our microgreens to form their little herb garden um, and their little sort of microgreen garden that they harvest for salads whenever they want. 
Um, I really like the red bean sorrel. I really like uh, celery. It tastes, so everything here would taste like uh, the bigger version of the herb, but it's a lot more intense. Um, my personal favorites are also the big peppermint, uh, dill and sweet basil, because they are just so strong in flavor and so fresh. Um, I've had clients who told me that the peppermint is the most pungent and most pepperminty kind of mint that they've ever tried in Singapore. Um, yes, and our blog. I promised to do that. I got distracted. Um, so on our blog, you can actually find some recipes and you can log you can basically get a QR code for this. My team will actually send you a PDF. Um, we have lots of recipes on based on our greens as well as community recipes. Um, and people submit recipes, tell us a little bit more what they've done with um, you know, our microgreens, our produce. And it's really, really a great community that we're continuing to grow. Um, am I going to expand the selection of veggies? Absolutely, yes. Um, I am speaking to farms all the time. And we have some really exciting things in the pipeline. So we're going to increase our vegetables as much as possible into what we have. Um, and we're going to include fruits when we can, uh, possibly not from Singapore, because they are rather difficult to grow here. But I have plans to sort of receive some fruits um, from probably um, as fresh as possible as well. So within 18 to 24 hours. Um, and with fruits, it's a little bit better because you don't, uh, people store fruits anyway. And that's what I'm looking forward to, right? I'll definitely update. Uh, so watch our social media, watch our website when we have some of this stuff. Final question, is everything organic? They are organically grown, yes. So with organic certification, uh, you do get a few things done in Singapore, but all of our vegetables are organically grown. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm almost at time. I wonder if anyone else has any other questions. Otherwise, I know I've been speaking for 30 minutes. The last thing I would end with is again, right? 30 minutes, 30% uh, 30 off your first purchase. Tell your friends and family. Um, a lot of our greens are, a lot of our greens are very, very well received. So, you know, our team will always be in touch if you need to ask us any, any questions. Um, let us know if you have any feedback. Thank you so much for those of you who are excited by this. My name's Jolene. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. You can email me directly at jolene at urbantilla.com if you guys would like to do any collaborations. If there are any influencers out there who would like to do like a funky taste test or like a blind taste test with fresh vegetables versus supermarket vegetables. If you want to do a cooking show, you want to do Instagram live, just reach out to us. I'm always looking for people to collaborate on. Um, if you want to be an influencer for us, let us know. I'll send you vegetables. Uh, try it out, post it on Instagram and spread it to as many people as you like. I really, really hope that in five years, Urban Tiller would be able to keep urban farmers happy and alive um, and that they would have the resources to continue growing the most amazing produce for us. I think we've come leaps and bounds from what you know, urban farming looked like many years ago and here's the time to actually appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time and have a great day, great Sunday. So thank you team delegate and thank you.